Hi there. My name is Beck Fing from House Paddock Training and Consulting. And on behalf of Local Land Services and the New South Wales Government, I'd love to take the opportunity to talk to you for the next few minutes about goal setting and planning for business success. Uh, at House Paddock, we've been helping uh, businesses, particularly in agriculture, for the last 15 years in this area. And I'd like to take the next few moments to share some thoughts with you. First and foremost, uh, I'm interested in um, the recipe, if you will, for uh, business effectiveness, for a business that will reach the goals of those who are involved, who a business that will create a sense of achievement, uh, satisfaction and fulfilment for the business owners, for the staff, for the clients, for the stakeholders that are involved, but also a business that will get to where it would like to be at some point in the future. So for us here at House Paddock, we have come up with a series of steps that we believe lend towards business effectiveness, if you will, of which the first thing is clarity of direction. The second is the ability to set some goals, but also then to put some planning and strategy development systems and structure in place for success. And the last uh, piece is a piece around mindset and execution. Let me take a moment to step through these steps. In the meantime, uh, wherever you found this video, chances are you would be able to find a little workbook that will allow you to take what I'm saying in theory uh, and put it in place in your business to collect your thoughts, write some notes and jot down some action items that might be of use to you. Let's make a bit of a start with a more holistic approach to this with a really simple roadmap. We all talk about the destination of our journey, of which uh, for us, that is our business mission, our business vision, the legacy we're looking to achieve, uh, what we'd like to be at some point in the future. I'm gonna talk about those things in a moment. But there's one thing to have the destination. What does your journey look like in business? And while this might all seem a bit pie in the sky, at the end of the day, having an understanding of what that road looks like will give us an opportunity to put, if you will, um, some guide rails or some boundaries in place for your business. Those boundaries uh, with the businesses we work with are made up by things like, it really is, it's a business plan. Uh, it's the structure we put in our business through processes and systems. Is it things like uh, our business values? Is it a budget, uh, policies and procedures, right down to codes of conduct and position descriptions? Once we have an understanding of what these boundaries or guide rails look like, it gives us the opportunity as both business owners and managers, but also whether it's uh, engaging staff members, engaging contractors, looking for our perfect client to make sure that they buy into the same system and structure. Let's have a think about uh, step number one, and that is that, that bubble at the top, that piece around clarity of direction. What is your business trying to achieve? If you've ever uh, engaged in a business plan and you can refer to our workbook uh, for some exercises to really tease out this stuff, it's important for your business to really understand what its vision and mission is. A vision from a business perspective is taking your business and putting it at some point in the future, it might be five years, it might be 10 years, it might be that you list your business for sale. What words are used to explain what your business looks like? And that will categorically um, give you a handle on what your business vision is. Your mission is more the value it delivers to uh, you as a business owner or manager, to your team, to your client, to the community, to the broader uh, network and stakeholder base. So the mission is around uh, what it brings, what value your business brings. Then we can have a bit of a think about um, our legacy. So Again, if we achieve what we're looking to achieve at some point in the future, what are we known for? What is the identity of our business and the business owners? And what is it that we are remembered for and known for? This will give us an opportunity to make sure that our, um, our journey, if you will, around paving the way with some business goals, which is where we're headed in a moment, um, has that journey has a destination. So take some time, have a squiz at that workbook, have a think about what is your business 
vision and your mission so we can put some clarity at the top of the tree. Uh, next, uh, I always work, when I'm working with business owners, I love talking about values for a lot of reasons. Values are important because they allow us to create some structure and framework back to those boundaries. They allow us to decide where we're going to put our business resources, so our time uh, and our financial resources. They allow us to um, really make decisions that we know are in line with the things that are critically most important to us. From a values perspective, we will have internal and external values. External values will be things like community. Uh, it will be things like the environment. It might be around productivity and profitability versus that of internal um, values such as uh, respect, integrity, loyalty. If you have a think about some of these values, are they shaping up how you are making business decisions and where you are utilising your resources. So have a bit of a think about what your business values are. Again, what you want to be known for, what you're trying to achieve, what reference point or ready reckoner you are using when you are making business decisions and ensure they are aligned with your business values. And hopefully those business values are shared by the people who are running and managing and owning that business, but also the people you engage with. So contractors, for example, clients, staff members. History suggests that there have been many a conflict that has been underpinned by misalignment of values. We have fought world wars based on a misalignment of values. By that, I mean, uh, it might be a religious belief, it might have been a political belief. But if you think about it back at a grassroots level, if you uh, would like uh, to say, uh, foster the value of loyalty, are you loyal in your business dealings? What, uh, from a values perspective, what is the difference and what is the preference around, say, attention to detail uh, and efficiency? Because sometimes quality and attention to detail and efficiency can sometimes be at odds with each other. But by owning and understanding and communicating our values, it will firstly ensure our resources uh, are allocated in line with those, but also will allow us to predict the behaviour of our business that of those we interact with and down the track, um, manage and mitigate some conflict as well. Also important that there are lots of things that um, may interfere with your values. By this, I mean that societal pressure, fatigue, financial hardship, they're some of the things that will, uh, I guess, curtail our ability to make decisions based on our values. We saw throughout the drought in the last uh, few years where people were making decisions and weren't, weren't, didn't necessarily sit with them because they weren't necessarily in line with values. Let's go back to that value of loyalty, for example, where they might have used a supplier or a contractor for a period of time a producer may have, and they found themselves having to deviate from that preference of having a loyal relationship based on financial hardship. What we would hope from a business that exhibits uh, and embodies authenticity is that our actions are underpinned by our values and our uh, reputation leads from that point. So take an opportunity through the exercises in the workbook to have a think about your values. So what is it that you would like to be known for? And what is it that you would like to guide the allocation of your business resources uh, and the actions of your business? And go about understanding and then being brave enough to communicate your values. The next element I wanna talk quickly about is having a real think about the current state of play of your business. Have you ever done a SWOT analysis of your business? Have a think about the uh, strengths that your business currently um, has going for it. Uh, what do you do well? What is it that you bring to the table that may set you ahead of, is it a competitor? Uh, is it that ensures, is it a risk, element, a risk management element? Is it a productivity element? What strengths do you, do you have? 
The alternative to that is obviously what areas of weakness are currently posing a threat to your business. So have a think about something that your company or business may lack, an area where you could invest some resources to improve, to move some of those strengths into the weakness column. We can then look, about, uh, look at opportunities and uh, threats. Uh, what opportunities can be materialised? Is it uh, around a competitive edge? Is it around a product differentiation? Is it around an element of productivity that will put you in front of, is it a competitor, a neighbour at the top of the industry? What opportunities exist and can you put some strategies in place to materialise them? Then lastly, we need to look at the things that are potentially threatening our businesses and having a think about if there's anything we can do from a risk management or strategic perspective and then down at an operational level to mitigate the impact of those threats. There's a little exercise uh, in your workbook to have a think about a SWOT analysis. And the real challenge here is to take the opportunities turn them into strengths and take the weaknesses and threats in combination and ensure we're putting strategies in, in place to mitigate their impact. I now want to talk about goal setting. There's a real mixed appetite in agriculture for goal setting because the reality is a lot of the things that impact our business most significantly, let's talk markets, let's talk um, the climate, let's talk potentially uh, political impacts, the things that impact uh, our profitability, our productivity and success are sometimes out of our control. There's a really unique uh, paradigm at which we find ourselves in. And as a result, the appetite for goal setting and planning is mixed. What we are finding is both from a strategic and operational perspective, planning is really what is setting farm businesses apart, planning and goal setting, um, to allow us to work through challenging times, control the things we can, and put systems and structures in place to mitigate the things we can't. So if you're not a goal setter and you need a little bit of convincing, stick with me. It's important for us, if we go back to our roadmap, to pop goal setting up in the top with those bubbles, uh, with vision and mission, and ensure that the roadmap that we are working on is towards some solid goals. What it will do is allow us to materialise that long-term vision. But if we also want a little bit of assistance, assistance to keep on track at the nitty gritty level, it'll give us that short-term motivation. It will also give us the opportunity for us to materialise the uh, skills and resources that our businesses need to acquire uh, to get the job done. And then that will allow us to reach our full potential. So what sort of skills and knowledge does your business need either internally or to bring in from externally to get that job done? The other thing is it will help us to organise our resources. Remember I said resources are our time and our money. I'm going to add into that mix our energy as a business owner or manager and or the operators in our business. We want to be utilising our time, our money and our energy in line with, uh, with something great, with our goals. So let's have a talk about uh, how to ensure goals are right for you. You may have come across the concept of a SMART goal definitely not something that's new and definitely not a concept uh, that I have created. Something that has been around in this space of personal and business effectiveness for many, many years. It's an acronym that rec uh, recognises the five elements of what will allow us to materialise a successful goal. We need that goal to be specific. Uh, growing better beef is not a goal that is specific. A kilo weight or maybe a percentage weight gain. It might be something around ground cover or pasture project pasture production uh, but improving pasture production is not a specific goal goal but improving pasture produ production geez I hope I don't have to say that too often is uh, by certain percentage or kilograms per hectare is a more specific goal which also lends us into the next element which is that of measurability we cannot manage what we haven't measured so putting a number on our goal, it might be an improvement by uh, a measurement such as um, a percentage or a, a ton or a kilo or whatever it might be. If you can put a measurement on it, 
it is a lot more a lot less difficult to manage. So I set the challenge up front that if you are new to goal setting, make sure that the goals that you set are um, specific and measurable. The next thing in here is that around attainable. And I use attainable and relevant uh, in cahoots as well, because they're really difficult to tease apart and allow to stand alone. Attainable or is that element of achievability. And look, depending on, I'm going to say reflecting on the past is what's going to give us the best indication around attainability. Also, uh, it depends, again, on the relevance because we need to have a look at what else is going on in our life and our business. If, say, for example, we have just invested significant, significantly in some capital uh, infrastructure, we may not have the resources by way of financial resources to materialise another goal. It might even be an off-farm investment or a significant investment in, say, a, a piece of machinery, equipment, uh, some seed stock, whatever it might be. Okay, so depending on what else is happening in our business by way of relevance, uh, depends how achievable it be, would be. Also, when I made the reference to history, we, um, so it is 2022 when I'm recording this video, the last four to six, eight years in agriculture have been really difficult. We are, I'm going to suggest, in a period of recovery at the moment, but we also need to consider that our resource base from a financial perspective and also from an energy perspective may well be low. And so we may well be in a, a process of recovery. So we might need uh, some goals that are relatively attainable with very little resources. It'll also give us that sense of satisfaction and achievement when we do get the job done. So have a think about how atta attainable you need that goal to be, how achievable. Do you need some quick wins? Uh, or, do you, you know, you've been limping along for a while. I think we can really dig deep and use the next 18 months. Given the season's looking up, I know that we can't necessarily predict that too far in advance. But, you know, what, what does your resource base look like? Can you really dig deep? The relevance piece, to close it out, uh, what else is going on in your life? Because sometimes a goal will be right, but it won't be right now. So is it that you need to give priority of your resources to something else? Okay, so again, have a think. While we draw one roadmap, in reality, we're probably paving five, six, seven, ten other roadmaps uh, at any one time. And some of those roadmaps create other roadmaps, okay? The other thing with all of this in terms of relevance, and I talk about energy and resources and time and money, what's it all for? And do we have enough left in our tank for the things that are important outside our business? In farming, it's a really unique environment because our farms often double as our home. We have the privilege of working with family members. So making sure we are nurturing relationships and we're spending time on our own mental and physical well-being uh, at the same time. So a little bit of a, a, a heads up, ready, reckoner there for you too. The last um, element of a SMART goal is one that is time bound. I'm not sure about you, but unless it has a deadline, it doesn't make my list. So making sure that you do have some deadlines Lines and maybe even some checkpoints by way of milestones in your strategy that ensure uh, you get the job done. So a, um, a goal that doesn't have that time frame, chances are other things will be prioritised in front of it. So we've got the goal. That's enough, isn't it? Absolutely not. A goal without a strategy is a pipe dream team. So let's talk about development of a strategy and some of the things we need to consider. I have talked um, quite extensively about resources, but in reality, when we look at our goals, do we have the resources to achieve them? So do we have the physical resources? Is there anything specific, a piece of equipment? Is it um, uh, bricks and mortar? Is it capital investment? But do we have the financial resources to materialise the goals? Do we have the time that we can re, um, uh, that we can dedicate by our team? And do we have the energy to get the uh, job done? Time is that other element. There, it might be that a goal is very resource intensive from a time perspective. Do we have the time to uh, invest? And are we willing to prioritise that goal um, above all else? The other thing here is this piece around relationships. So it 
has a whole number of connotations when it comes to setting goals. Firstly, we need to make sure we have a tribe around us to get the job done. That might be uh, specialists. It could be consultants uh, that provide advice in terms of reaching that goal. It could be the team that is going to help materialise the operational side of that goal for you. So do you have the relationships in place to materialise the goals? If you work out that there might be 800 man hours required to get the job done and some really specialist skills. Do you need to acquire those skills yourself or could you put in place a relationship with a specialist contractor, a consultant, someone that can bring those skills to the table? Another important relationship in terms of um, uh, goal setting is that of a mentor for a number of reasons. A mentor or a coach will allow you um, the opportunity quite often uh, accountability is an issue. So do you have someone who's keeping you on track? It could be someone within your business. It could be someone externally. But what we want to do is make sure that if we go back to our roadmap, remember we had our, our direction at the top, and then we're going to start putting in place these guide rails to get there, which is reaching these goals. Is there anyone that is keeping you on track? Who's giving you a little pat along the way? And that for me, uh, relationships and ensuring we have those people on board to support us to get our job done is really important. We rarely operate uh, autonomously when we are reaching our goals. The next thing is this piece around skills. So we talked about utilising others from a skills base, especially from a technical perspective. But if you think about the skills that are required to reach your goal, there's usually two types. The first will be uh, interpersonal skills or intrapersonal skills, which are those soft skills. So those are things like discipline, it might be communication, your ability to negotiate, time management, organisation, planning, all of those things that will allow us to materialise those goals. Those skills are learnable. Quite often we label ourselves in such a way, I'm not a great communicator, I'm not particularly organised, I don't plan. If the lack of those skills is not allowing you to reach your potential, I challenge you to drop the label, practise some of those skills and work towards improving them. The other type of skills are the technical skills, your ability to drop the oil out of a tractor, your uh, ability to assess uh, an appropriate herd bull, uh, your ability to strain a fence. OK, talking very specifically here from a farming perspective, but is it that from an administration perspective, your ability to utilise a computer to your financial literacy, they're all skills that we may need throughout the course of running a, a business. What technical skills do you need? So they've got these hard and soft skills that both of which are learnable. The question is, do you need to learn them or do you just need someone else in your business to have them or an external to bring them to the table? A huge fan of talking about milestones so again back to our roadmap is it that if you'd like to be at this certain point in two years time in 12 months time we have to be halfway along that path okay and what does that look like if uh, an increase in um, a productivity element by 20% in two years is where you'd like to be. Does that mean you've got to be halfway along that path at 10% in one year, which is 5% in six months time? Allowing us to put these milestones in place will make sure we're on track. And if you hit one of those milestones, is it an issue around accountability? Did you not have a strategy or did you not follow the strategy? Did you not allocate the resources appropriately? At which point we have two choices. We change the strategy or we change the time frame. So let's have a think about taking uh, these goals, allowing us to create a strategy, but then putting a plan in place. Putting a plan in place will allow us to lay the bricks on the road. The bricks are those resources, those time, that time and the money that we're going to pop on that road to pave that brick. Um, from a planning perspective, again, we see a really differing attitude towards planning uh, in agriculture, but what we also see is those who do uh, take the opportunity to create a plan uh, will utilise the resources that are available to them more efficiently. So, I love this um, very basic table around operational planning. So let's go back just a moment and we're going to suggest that we have our vision and our mission. We've also popped up in here our goals and we've got these guide rails in place. 
the process now is to create a plan. So we, if you will, if you don't mind me saying, go straight up the guts. I'm going to challenge you to think about how restrictive, how formal, how structured we want these plans to be. Because if you think about allocation of resources and paving these roads, a road, and I hope you can see my arm, if you're my arms, if you're listening to me, I've got my arms quite wide spread across the full width of the screen. This road takes more to pave than this road. And I've just tucked my elbows in. Okay, so the businesses that we know and love and respect for being on the straight and narrow, I'm challenging you to suggest that not only do they know what that road looks like, they put the boundaries in place and then they have a, pl a plan that's relatively narrow and the resource efficiency is quite high because this road takes less to pave than this road. Okay, so let's go back and have a think about how we can start teasing apart, if you will, uh, the allocation of our uh, resources from a planning perspective. Across the top, and these categories may not fit in your business, but you might have some sort of uh, animal production um, enterprise. You may well have something around soils and pasture and cropping, potentially infrastructure and machinery or maintenance. We always have business admin and, uh, and strategy. And I'm hoping that you'll be brave enough to leave family and personal there from a planning perspective. Quite often the family and personal column is left off and it gets the leftovers. What we wanna do is from a perspective of balance and also mental and physical wellbeing is we wanna leave it there and funnily enough plan for it. Once we've had an understanding, this might be that you map this out from a 12 month perspective. We wanna have a think about what we'd like to achieve. And then we can pull it apart from a planning perspective and put it into things that are a one-off task versus things that are more seasonal into things that are monthly. We might end up here into a repetitive tasks and then into weekly. From this, we can take uh, an opportunity to put some operational structure in place uh, to make sure that these plans are met. The other thing is when we go back to those relationships and allocation of our resources, who's doing these jobs? Are there things that are one off that you mightn't be the best person for the job and you might be best sticking with your trade and getting someone in to do something specific? Is there a seasonal task that can be done by someone in your team, someone external, a contractor or a consultant, or are you the best person for the job? When we talk about efficiency and planning, we always look at who is the best person for the job in that respect. So have a think about your business. And this table is again in our workbooks. If you have a think about your business, maybe at a 12 month, uh, for a 12 month period, what are the things you'd love to achieve across that period of time? Are they one off seasonal, monthly or weekly tasks? And then go the next layer of whose job are they? Because if we do want to implement the strategy, we need to have that annual plan. So that annual plan, we're going to refresh, we're going to review our vision and our mission, have a think about whether there's a theme for the year, a big picture priority. What is it that you're trying to achieve? If you get to the end of the next 12 months and it is a success for you and your business, what did it look like? then we can allow that to influence some seasonal planning or quarterly planning from a financial perspective. Seasonal planning are things like operational and production targets. Um, it's about having to think about the resources that are required across that season, some of the inputs, and put some planning in place that may impact both the people who are in your business, but also the people that are supporting Monthly planning, I love these sort of little strategic meetings that are involving anyone who's involved in the business at a strategic level, what needs to be achieved, any key activities, priorities, who's around, who's away, what inputs do we need, what contractors do we need, what uh, do we need the next month to achieve. That will then allow us to uh, develop a weekly plan, which is really operational, what tasks are a priority, what can impact them, what stra uh, strategies and systems do we need to put in place, who's doing what and by when. If we go back to the original slide, uh, I said mindset and execution were a big one. And excuse my language when I say it's at this point where we know that our plans are in line with our, uh, our goals, which are in line and influenced by our vision and our mission. It's at this point that we have to do the bloody thing. Okay, so take the opportunity to put habits, put rituals, put routines, put structures, put systems in place to allow your business to really effectively lay the bricks on the right path, no wasted bricks outside those boundaries, on the right path to get us to where we need to be. So um, we now, with 
a little bit of support from the workbook that is um, alongside this video, we can have a think about our vision and our mission, the legacy we're trying to achieve. What does success in the long term look like for our business? We can also identify some core values and then allow that to influence and start to frame up the boundaries or the roadmap that we are going to utilise to uh, allocate the resources in our business. We can also hope at this point that the values of your business or organisation are immediately aligned to the values of uh, the business owners and managers and those uh, who are also involved. We want to identify some SMART goals. Remember, we're going to make sure they're specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. From there, we're going to create the strategy, which will then allow us to create the plan. Overall, it'll be the path to get the job done. I hope that this short video has been of use to you in your business around some little key points for clarity of direction, understanding some goals um, and planning and uh, strategies for success to get that job done. Uh, on behalf of the New South Wales Government and Local Land Services, I'm Beck Fing from House Paddock Training and Consulting. I hope this, this short video has been of use to you and your business.